This is one of the most common phones in the entire world today, the iPhone, specifically the iPhone 11 Pro. But I don't need to tell you that though, because I know you know what an iPhone looks like. You probably even own one, and even if you don't, I bet you see phones like these all the time these days. But if we were to rewind time all the way back to those days, I'm talking the good old days, even further back, even further back, I mean back back, they will be somewhere in the mid to late 2000s, and we'll have this. One of the most common phones in the entire world yesterday, a Blackberry. Now, in case you're wondering what this phone with all these buttons has in common with the iPhone of the time, or of any time for that matter, well, it's not hard to see, actually. We just shouldn't look at the physical phones themselves, but in the way we use them. That's when we see that iPhones and Blackberries are very similar in core ways. They're almost cousins. Think about it. How do we use iPhones today? Well, not so differently than we have since, let's even say, the iPhone 4. Things have changed, of course, but the iPhone is still the iPhone. What makes an iPhone an iPhone, though? Well, iPhones have some core things that have always made them unique. One of these is their focus on build quality. No one can doubt that Apple takes great care and puts great attention to detail when designing their products. They've always been this way. Before the iPhone though, Blackberries kind of did the same exact thing. I mean, the design scheme is way, way different from iPhones. Or maybe I should say iPhones are way, way different from Blackberries. Because the iPhone had a pretty new and weird design in those days. They were the new guys. They were the underdogs at the beginning. But we'll talk more about that later, of course. The build quality of Blackberries, though, are or were superb as well. Many phones were made with just plastic back then, but Blackberries would go the extra mile and add a little bit of metal or some stainless steel or something to just make it look more premium. And they also had the iconic Blackberry keyboard, which they were known for, and it was very, very nice as well. Very clicky and just overall premium. I don't know if I'll say they were as good as iPhones though. Actually, if you asked me back then, I think I might have said they were, but I'm looking back now and I don't think that's the case. But what do you think? Which is more premium to you, Blackberries or iPhones? Anyways, they also have something else in common. Actually, this is the main, main thing they have in common. The thing that makes iPhones, iPhones, that made Blackberries, Blackberries. Well, for the most part. Like, if you take this thing away from iPhones, sales of iPhones would drop significantly and the iPhone name would lose its touch. Now, this is a big statement I'm making because keep in mind, Apple has done a lot of funny stuff in the past, like removing headphone jacks, using lower quality displays, using lower quality technology, honestly, for a long while, adding notches and charging increasingly audacious prices. And yet, iPhones are still being bought and the iPhone name is still intact. Now, why do you think that is? What thing is this I'm talking about? Well, no one really seriously talks about it, but everyone talks about it at the same time. I think you know what it is. In fact, I'm confident you know, even though you might not know that you know, but you know, you know? It's one word, one syllable, clout. In many places and friend groups, owning an iPhone is just cooler. It always was. So people criticize and say, oh, you're only buying that overpriced iPhone for the Apple logo, and they don't even know how much truth is in that statement. These people don't want iPhones exactly just for the Apple logo though, but they want it for everything the logo represents, both to themselves and the rest of the world. Some would even consider using any other phone like Android because that's basically lower class to them. Now, if you actually look at things, you see that this isn't a case at all and iPhones aren't objectively better than Androids. In fact, iPhones have a habit of doing some very, very funny stuff and lagging behind when it comes to technology. Sometimes they're just plainly objectively worse. But what are you gonna be doing? Sending green text? Ugh, no, no, embarrassing. You want that blue text and if you don't have it, you're not cool. Well, at least not as cool. Like you're definitely not part of that exclusive iPhone Apple group, you know? If you rewind time a couple years back though, at least in certain places, and if you wanted to be a part of the cool group, then you'll have to get a Blackberry. In fact, I know I've kind of been exaggerating this cool factor for iPhones and everything, but back then, where I lived at least, if you didn't have a Blackberry, you really, really weren't cool. Like those were the rules. It wasn't a matter of blue text or green text. No, it was a matter of BBM or not BBM. Now, if you don't know what BBM is, well, I'll tell you. BBM, or the BlackBerry Messenger, was just about the main reason you'd buy a BlackBerry. BBM was BlackBerry. It was the heart of all the clout and the entire brand of BlackBerry, just like with iPhones. It wasn't objectively so special or anything. No, instead, it was very exclusive. Only Blackberries could use it, and everyone that didn't use it knew they had less clout. They knew they were settling by just using WhatsApp or Facebook to chat. Or maybe they were just smart and just didn't care. But the rest of us did. Exclusivity was working very well for Blackberries, just like it's working very well for iPhones today. 
But if you look around, you know that blackberries aren't really anywhere to be found these days. They're not really thriving like before. So what happened to them? Well, we stopped using them. Yes, but why did we stop using them? Well, if you know your BlackBerry history, then you know that BBM didn't stay exclusive to BlackBerry forever. At a point, they got released to the App Store and Google Play Store for Android and iPhone. And that was just about the last thing, the final thing that ended BlackBerry. But when you think about it, it kind of seems stupid. Like why did BlackBerry make that decision, right? Kind of seems dumb on paper. Why would they do that? Well, let's run through the story one more time. Let's go back to when Blackberries were the smartphones to have. This is around the time iPhones didn't even exist. But then my friend, I don't know if you know him, his name is Steve. My friend Steve decided to give a little presentation. Every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along. That changes everything. 1984, we introduced the Macintosh. In 2001, we introduced the first iPod. Today, we're introducing three revolutionary products of this class. The first one is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. The second is a revolutionary mobile phone. And the third is a breakthrough internet communications device. So, three things. A widescreen iPod with touch controls, a revolutionary mobile phone, and a breakthrough internet communications device. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. An iPod, a phone. Are you getting it? These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. And so, the first iPhone was out. The iPhone, the game changer. The trendsetter had come into existence. Other companies must have been shaking. They must have been worried. They must have been figuring out what to do next. They must have been anxious. Just anxious. Except, they actually didn't really give a crap. They basically weren't worried at all. They didn't care really. Like, almost not at all. In fact, they kind of did the opposite of caring. Look at some of these quotes from executives from big companies. Microsoft CEO at the time said, there's no chance that the iPhone is going to get any significant market share. No chance. And then Microsoft held a funeral for the iPhone when they launched a new version of Windows Phone a couple years later. <laughs> Look at this. The CEO of RIM, which made Blackberries, said when talking about the iPhone that it's kind of one more entrance into an already very busy space with lots of choice for consumers. But in terms of a sort of a sea change for Blackberry, I would think that's overstating it. Hmm. In fact, look at this. They asked Motorola how they plan to deal with iPhone and Apple, and they replied, how do they deal with us? Wow. Now, these guys in these companies weren't stupid or anything. In fact, I really like the way Motorola answered the question. Like a real baller, real confident, real cocky. And honestly, they had every right to be with their sales numbers and everything. It was really a different time, and they were already an established company just like BlackBerry was. In fact, that's probably a big understatement. Basically, everyone thought the iPhone messed up. That it was nothing to worry about. They thought Steve didn't know what he was doing. I mean, he broke all the rules. But my man Steve, man, he was on to something. See, we look back now and just know that iPhones and the idea and potential behind them is just objectively better for us humans. Companies like BlackBerry thought iPhones were way too different, that they deviated from the formula way too much. And they had a point. I mean, how could you release a phone without a physical keyboard? That just wasn't a thing you did. How could you expect mainstream success when you don't have a physical keyboard when all the big global mainstream successful companies have a physical keyboard like the Blackberry? And Blackberries had just about the best ones. So of course they weren't worried about any iPhones or whatever with its touchscreen and one button and the system with apps and all and just everything the iPhone stood for. Of course they weren't worried. At the time, it just didn't make sense to worry. So they didn't. But long story short, 
they should have. Because we, the consumers, now know, and basically always knew, that the iPhone way just worked better for us. We knew we wanted to head in that direction. We knew that it was the future. And soon, it got to the point where all the established companies, including BlackBerry, started feeling it as well. Not just in their pocket, but probably in their hearts too. They waited and waited and stuck to their guts and refused to change, but when it started properly affecting their business, they then tried making modern type phones and trying to head into the new direction to compete in the post iPhone world. And they tried to do this while retaining their identity still, you know, with the BlackBerry OS and BlackBerry app world, but it didn't really work out. You couldn't even get popular apps like Snapchat on Blackberries, and even the popular popular apps you could get everywhere were subpar on Blackberries. They were just worse. BlackBerry phones, along with many, many other phones, were losing a lot of sales to iPhones and Androids too. And they were losing these sales very quickly too. At a point, it seemed like it was only BBM that was keeping users that were still using BlackBerry from leaving BlackBerry. But with the way things were going, with iMessage gaining popularity as well, it kind of seemed that BBM could die along with BlackBerry phones themselves. And that's just about when BlackBerry decided they had to do something big to save the company and play one of their only big cards left releasing BBM to other platforms. See, I can remember myself that it was a big deal back then because everyone using whatever iPhone or Android phone could join the social elite BBM group. But then that kind of took away from the appeal of it and exposed just how BBM was objectively worse when compared to apps like WhatsApp, technologically speaking. And releasing BBM to other devices was also just about how they say, the straw that broke the Blackberry's back. Because that was just about the only thing and only strong enough reason to get a BlackBerry over modern iPhones and Androids. And at that point, BBM was available on all devices, basically. So it was kind of just dumb to buy a BlackBerry on paper because there were worse devices. And since then, myself and millions of other people haven't bought a BlackBerry since. Oh well. Today, we don't see too many Blackberries around, but they've released phones through the years, they've tried to do some cool things, and some of them have looked very cool and nostalgic, but they've not been able to capture their same glory from the past. I mean, if they did, we'd have known by now, because we'd be seeing Blackberries everywhere, and that's just not the case. I mean, I don't see Blackberries anywhere anymore. Do you? Let me know in the comment section below. I know we all see iPhones everywhere we go though, right? And we're very used to the iPhone culture. And because of that, I was just thinking one day, you know? iPhones kind of remind me of Blackberries. Like the whole culture of the brand name and logo being a big thing socially, the uniqueness of each, the exclusivity with iMessage, just like with BBM, their own independent OS, you know, they're just similar. Like sometimes, I think if you look at iPhones from an angle, like in a certain light, you can kind of see the Blackberry in them. Eh, maybe not. You know it's just a matter of time, right? I'm sorry, what? You know it's just a matter of time, right? Are you talking to me? Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking to the other iPhone on the table. Hey, what's up? Anyways, you know it's just a matter of time, right? For... For you to run your course. Become just like me. <sighs> Don't be bitter. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Look, B, with all due respect, I just don't think that's gonna happen to us, you know? We're just better. You know, with all due respect, with all due respect. <laughs> I'm better. <laughs> with all due respect, I'm... <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen to me. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I'm better. <laughs> Look at me, I'm an iPhone. <laughs> I'm gonna leave forever. <laughs> yo, I remember when I said that. I said, yo, 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 stop. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Stop. Stop. <laughs>